brought to you by Allstate, whose policies now include protection for your home, your family, as well as your car. You're in good hands with Allstate. And now, let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, author, raconteur, publisher, Mr. Bennett Cerf. The panel of What's My Line is a little bit discombobulated tonight because uh, our beautiful Arlene has sneaked off to the rapidly expanding metropolis of Phoenix where at the Sombrero Playhouse she's reviving old acquaintance this week and I hear they're sold out hanging from the rafters. But uh, with her gone, uh, we're going to try an experiment tonight and have three gentlemen and for the sex interest, Dorothy's going to have to carry on all by herself. So. Once I sat next to Dana Winter, a very beautiful girl. Now I'm introducing a Dana of a different sex, the famous actor, real estate operator, Mr. Dana Andrews. And I have the privilege of introducing the only member of our panel from the distaff side tonight, the charming and attractive Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you. And I have the pleasure of introducing a young man who is currently almost in two places at once. He's at Carnegie Hall emceeing the Fight for Sight, a wonderful charity, and he's come over here to be on our panel, Mr. Johnny Carson. Thank you, Dorothy. And on my left, a man of many facets, the leader of our little group, a respected newsman and a former used word dealer, Mr. John <laughs> Daly. <laughs> well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. I would like to make a small announcement, and I think this is going to be a surprise to one of our panel members. You all know Dorothy Kilgallen. I've had the great joy of knowing her mother and dad for many years because I used to work with her dad when he was heading up the uh, old international news service operations overseas, particularly during the war. Well, today at St. Patrick's Cathedral, Dorothy's mother and father, Jim and May, were given a certificate by Cardinal Spellman because in this year, 1962, they will observe their golden wedding anniversary. Congratulations, Dorothy. <laughs> And we're up to our old tricks. It's nice to have Dana Andrews with us, and certainly a joy always to have Johnny Carson back, but this doesn't change our manners a bit. We've got some very interesting occupations and some nice people who brought them to the theater, and we expect to give the panel a rough time in the next 30 minutes. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before the members of the panel a little bit later in the show, and we'll meet our first challenger after this word. And now let's meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Mario Mario De Pita, is that right? <laughs> Mr. De Pita, where are you from? Italy. From Italy? Yes. Oh, well, it's nice to have somebody from Italy come and visit us in What's My Line. May I present our distinguished panel, Mr. DePita? Will you join me over here now, please? You, coming from Italy, know how we keep score on What's My Line? Well, I never hear about it. Well, I tell you what happens. They ask you questions, and if you can answer no, we flip a card. Ten flips, and you've won the game. If they guess what your line is before we can flip the ten cards, then they've won the game. All right? Okay. Then we will... Um, since you know how to keep score now, let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. All right, panel. We can tell you that Mr. DePeter is salaried, that he deals in a service, 
And we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett Cerf. Mr. DePeter, do you work, do you perform your service for a profit-making organization? Yes. Uh, do you do that service here in America? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Andrews. Uh, does this service have anything to do with linguistics? No. Not basically. I would say here that Bennett has, has uh, I think, clarified the fact that Mr. DePeter performs his service outside of the United States. And there might be uh, some issues of language involved only to the degree that uh, non-Italian speaking people might come in. But it's not fundamental. So that's two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Buonasera. Um, <laughs> does, does your service, Mr. DePeter, have a counterpart in the United States? Is it being performed in the United States by someone? Do you know? No. No, I think there again, Dorothy, there might be special circumstances where it would be uh, contrived that the, the service would be performed, but it would not normally be performed it's in the United more States. more naturally an Italian service. Huh? That's right. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Carson. Uh, Mr. DePita, do you understand Mr. Daly at all? <laughs> No, you understood what I said. You say yes. 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 Uh, do you work with your hands, Mr. DePeter? Yes. Uh, when you perform or offer these services, do you come into physical contact uh, with the people? Do you no. touch them at all? No. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. DePeter, do you perform your service in an enclosure rather than outdoors? I can understand that. Well, Mr. Sir's question is, do you perform your service in an enclosure, by which I take it you mean within an enclosed area, a Meaning building, a building or, or an something office like or that? Store and or what theater. you need to clarify for Mr. Sir here is this, and I think you can clarify it best by saying no as loudly as you know how. <laughs> Thank you. Five down and five to go, Mr. Andrews. Do you, uh, in performing your service, come into contact uh, personal contact with people. Do you touch them? No. That's been, I think, that, that's been clarified, that there's no physical contact. Oh, so Does uh, you your service have question? anything to do with music? No. Um, <clears throat> small con... <laughs> I never seen. <laughs> <clears throat> Pardon. Now, I think here we'll give you a qualified yes, Dana, because although... Uh, Mr. DePeter himself does not have a direct contact with music. It is not considered rare that the particular service with which he is connected does have some music associated with it. Ah. <laughs> All Italians sing, I know that. You're not referring to that. No, no, what I am <laughs> suggesting here that is uh, that with other individuals it's reasonable to expect that there might be a direct connection uh, with music while the, the uh, service is being performed. I see. Do you have an audience while you're performing your service? I mean, specifically come to see the performance? Are there, are there people gathered around? Well, are there... He doesn't people? work alone, in other words. <laughs> well, no, he doesn't work alone, but I think here to help you, then, I have, you know, I have to go to the, to the question, are you asking whether an audience comes particularly to see the performance. Is an audience necessary? Is an audience necessary? That's six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. <laughs> Mr. DePeter, do you speak to the people when you're performing your service? Sometimes. Uh, can you perform it without speaking? Yes. Do you show them anything? Sometimes. Do you give them anything? Sometimes. <laughs> Do you wear a, a distinctive uh, garb or uniform which would make me, which would assist me in recognizing what you do? Most of the time. Most of the time. Um, and you work, work not in an enclosure, therefore do you work out of doors? Yes. On the ground? Yes. On the ground. That's seven uh, down and three oh, to go, Miss Carson. You got it? You got it? Dorothy's got it. Well, now, wait a Is there a... Uh, uh, could, could I please? You have 15 seconds for a conference. I, I One, if it's not on two, the ground, he could be a gondolier. Three, four, Either that or he no. teaches five, the Italian five, twist. Six, seven, eight, yeah. nine, what? ten. Um, see if he's from Venice, John. Uh, you are from Venice? Yes. 
Do you uh, have a long pole in your hand? Yes. And you, uh, you're a gondolier? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, your dad and your granddad before you were gondoliers, are they? Is that not so? All gondoliers sang. No, but Mr. DePeter doesn't. Special... This is what I was trying to tell you, Dad. They have a special cry. Could yes, you do what that? does that old mean? What, is that, what does that come from, Mr. Peter, when you yell old, when you're going around a corner, don't you? Isn't that Yes, the... we call old, you know? What does that mean? Well, just a to... Oh, I don't know. To warn that you're coming around the bend. Right. Uh, you know? Four. <laughs> oh, lag. Oh, 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 oh. oh. But is it a warning signal that you're going to turn? No, there is. Sometimes we have the light, uh, traffic light, too, on the uh -huh. canal. You see? But when, the... when you say old, what are you doing? Are you well, the, the, if, somebody, if, if somebody's coming, he will stop. Ah, so it's, it's a warning. It's, sure. it's like pressing a button, Bennett. It's in know. place of an automobile horn. Yeah, in place of a... In, oh, and it sounds better, too, I might say. <laughs> but the interesting thing about this, if I understand this correctly, is that you're an apprentice for ten full years before yes. you become a full gondolier, and you've done it for eight of the ten years, and right. you won't get your full status for another two years. Right. And your dad and your grandfather yes. have done the same? My father's still a gondolier. They're still a gondolier. Ah, wonderful. Well, how nice of you to come and and uh, row your boat with us tonight. I don't guess you'd call it rowing. Pole your boat with us tonight. Thank you very much. It's Thank been you. nice to have you on What's My Life. Now let's see what we can do with a second contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? T.O. T.O. Albers. T.O. Albers. Uh, yes, yes. Mr. Albers, where are you from? Artesia, California. Artesia, Artesia California. California. Nice to have you with us. May I introduce the panel, Mr. Oh, Albers? Yes. You join me over here. Do you know how we keep score, Mr. Albers? Yes, sir. Fine. We'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. I can tell you that Mr. Albers is self-employed and deals in a product. <laughs> and uh, we'll begin the general questioning with um, Dorothy Kilgallen. Mr. Albers, could anyone on this panel enjoy your product? <laughs> yes, they could. Uh, would you say that I oh, could? No, let, let, let me stop. <laughs> when you use the word enjoy, Dorothy, I, mu I, well, I must try to offer an, expl an explanation. Uh, <clears throat> under certain circumstances, if enjoyment uh, is to be considered as having the same meaning as benefit, under certain circumstances, you certainly would benefit, or any member of the panel would benefit, but it would be required that, that a circumstance exist which would make the service valuable to well, you. Well, we could at least use it, even if we didn't enjoy using it. Is that it? <laughs> uh, do you work in an enclosure? No. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Carson. Uh, if I used your product in Macy's window at high noon, would it draw a crowd? <laughs> I didn't know. Mr. Carson wanted to know if he used your product in Macy's window at high noon, would it draw a crowd? Oh, the biggest crowd ever. <laughs> uh, is this product uh, edible? No. No. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. <laughs> Mr. Alvarez, is this product of yours, is it or ever, has it ever been alive? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Andrews. Does the uh, product, is the product uh, which you work with a byproduct of another industry? No. Four down and six to go, Ms. Kilgallen. Now, you don't work in an enclosure. Do you work out of doors? Yes. On the ground? Yeah. No more tricky fellows on the water. Um, this product, could I hold it in my hands? No. Five down and five to go, Mr. Carson. Uh, when this product is used, does the user come in contact with it? Yes. Uh, would it be any kind of uh, apparel or contraption that you put on? No. That's six down and four to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Albus, could this product ever be used in the defense of the United States? <laughs> 
tried to stay all over here. What? No. <laughs> uh, is that the answer? No, I think you misunderstood, Mr. Sif. Mr. Sif asked if this product could be used in the defense of the United States. And though it, uh, when you understand what it is, it's highly likely no. that uh, with some small adaptations it might be, that's not its purpose. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Andrews. Is the product which you have, is it packaged? No. Eight down and two to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is this anything that people could get into? No. Well, now, let me say this. I, I think, sir, if you would agree that if people wished to get into this product, they could get into well, it. Well, yes. <laughs> That's all I meant, John. Mm -hmm. It seems sort of big. Is it solid rather than liquid? Solid. Yeah, it's solid. Um, <laughs> is, it, is it bigger than a phone booth? Much bigger. Does it have movable parts? Yes. Is it in any sense... Um, no, it couldn't be. A, if it were a vehicle, people would get into it, wouldn't they? Yeah, somebody somebody would. Yeah. Uh, is it, could it be, in any sense, called a machine? Yes. It's a piece of machinery that you have yes. something to do with. Is it the kind of machinery that would be used on a farm? Yes. yes. Uh, does it have anything to do directly with an animal on a farm? Yes. Uh, is the animal a cow? Yes. Does it have anything to do with dusting off flies or milking? No. No. Nine down and one to go, Mr. Carson. <laughs> Does this machine spread anything? Yes. <laughs> that may help in the defense of the country. I don't know. But... Uh, is it just, does this spread some kind of, is it a, like a planter uh, that would spread grain? Is it like a planter? A planter, a planting machine that a plants planting grain? Machine. No. Plant? No, I'm afraid not. Ten down and no more to go, and I'm very happy that we got to ten at this point, I might add. Uh, Mr. Albers is the inventor and the manufacturer of a cow washing machine. Oh. <laughs> It's our absolute nemesis. We, we've had a lady on here twice who washes cows that we didn't spot. Well, but she this, does it by hand. This she is a great machine. Hand. It works like a car wash. You, the cow goes in and he, he's scrubbed and <laughs> bathed and washed and, and uh, they comb his hair and set it and put hairspray on and then out he goes out the other hey, end. Albert, what would happen if Mr. Daly went in by mistake? He gets tough, too. Did he get washed? He no, gets sure washed, would. too. Aren't these cowed ladies, John? You kept calling them him. Well, I'm not much of an expert on this, Dorothy. Uh, do you wash both male and female? Just the female. Just the female. I'm sorry. Then, I, then I'm, I've misled you all, and I'm dreadfully sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Elvis. Nice to have you with us. Uses only three and a half gallons per cow. No, three gallons per cow, and you can wash a cow in four seconds. There you are. Now, we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, this word from our sponsor. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which, as you all very well know, the panel is always blindfolded. Are the blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes. 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 Good. Will you enter Mystery Challenger and sign in, please? <laughs> panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin with uh, Johnny Carson. I assume it is a, a lady. You assume it is a... From the whistles, I assume it is a, a lady. Is that true? Yes. Mr. Sir? Are you a motion picture actress? Yes. Mr. Andrews? Uh, do you have a motion picture recently released in New York? Yeah. 
Miss Kilgallen? Already released, huh? Are you married to a producer? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Carson. Would you like to be? No. <laughs> Two down and eight to go, Mr. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Are you younger than 18 years old? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Andrews. I'm afraid I've put together some facts that are completely unrelated to this program. I'll have to disqualify myself. Oh. Miss Kilgallen? Well, I think I'm going to pass. Mr. Carson? Oh, swell. Uh, <laughs> uh, you are currently in a, in a film that is in the, in the New York area? That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, recently released? That's right. Um, is this a biblical epic? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, is this a picture that was taken from a novel by Scott Fitzgerald? <coughs> no. Five down and five to go. Mr. Andrews has disqualified himself, Miss Kilgallen. Um, are you married to an actor? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Carson. Are you married? No! <laughs> That's seven down and three to go, Mr. Sir. Is, is this a picture that might play more, more, be more likely to be played in the small art houses than the great big cinema palaces? No. I would think here, with your permission, I would, would try to take this over. I think here, Bennett, that it would be hard to, to say that it more likely would. Uh, I think we would have to admit that it is susceptible to playing in either one or the other. That's a big help. That's a big help. <laughs> now you know. Uh, is this picture a picture that was based on a stage play? No. Eight down and two to go, Mr. Carson. Oh, this is a murder. Uh, is this a, uh, a serious play? Uh, a movie rather than a, a musical? No. That's nine down and one to go, Mr. Sir. Oh, what a burden rests on these frail shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> Having the, uh, is there any music in this picture? Yeah. Miss Kilgallen? Do you sing in the picture? No. Ten down and none to go. We didn't stick you, and I'm very pleased to say Miss Tuesday Weld is our guest. Oh. Are you under 18, Miss Well? Aren't you under 18? No. And the, and the picture is 20th Century Fox Bachelor Flat. I was a little unfair to you, Bennett, because we should have told you that it wasn't in one of the bigger houses, but I thought it might be a little bit more fun not to give you any information. Dana, you disqualified yourself. Why? Uh, I put two completely unrelated facts at the time together after I, heard, after I asked her if she was in a picture that was recently released here, and then I remembered having heard someone say something about her tonight. And uh, I have never met Miss Wells. Oh, oh, wonderful. Now, Miss Wells has got a broken leg. We happen leg. to have the same agent. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. But he didn't tell me. No. It was that uh, I have Just mentioned the name. A completely different time about something else entirely, and I put it together. What did you do to your leg? I kicked a camera. <laughs> well, I'm no, glad not, it was. Not a I kicked a camera, Dolly. As you were not, I trust, in, in uh, high John, dudgeon. No, no. Bachelor Flat, I presume that's a picture. Yes. Bachelor Flat, 20th Century Fox, yeah. that's right. Good. May I thank you very much for coming thank to you. see us with that, with that bad leg? It's very nice to have had you on What's My Line, and if I may come over and help you with this. You see, what we had uh, to hide from you was... Shall I do the twist now? And yes, <laughs> Overall, you've done rather well tonight, panel, and we'll be back after this word from our alternate sponsor. And so we would, in the few seconds we have left, say hello to Arlene, who's away from us in Phoenix. Thank you to Dana Andrews and Johnny Carson for being with us tonight. And for all the panel, I'd like to say thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What's My Line.